Hi there. Uh, thank you everybody for coming. We have about half of our group on and coming on. So I would just first love to introduce myself. I realized last, um, last weekend, I forgot to say who I was. I am Laura Gray and I am a medical intuitive in Boston as well as the founder of Medigration. Um, and I'll talk a little bit more about Medigration. One of the other things that I forgot to do last week, I think more important than introducing myself even, is to um, say, just give a great shout out to all of the people that helped me put these presentations and actually have helped me put Medigration together. Um, Jen Turner is the illustrator. You'll see all of her graphics throughout the uh, slideshow. And uh, Mia Sanborn is my amazing uh, intern who, if you, as you're watching the neurons on here, that is as fast as her brain goes. Um, and then all of the music is composed by Brandon Lau, who is a composer out in LA. He was in Berkeley uh, School um, of Music in Boston and I found him and I was so lucky. Um, one thing about the scores, all of the scores that Medigration does, they are entrained to different parts of your organs. Brandon has done some incredible research um, I participated in my PhD on that to have the music also help move the different brain waves. So uh, just an amazing support with Brandon. And then my just unbelievable director of creative, Lindsay Mazzola, who I just couldn't do any of this with. Lindsay manages me, manages everything, makes sure, um, you know, that everything just sort of gets done the way that it should be done. So thank you so much. Um, all right, so let's get going. We've got more, uh, we've got everybody. So I am just going to start uh, sharing my screen and we'll start the show, the deck. Everybody's pretty much done a webinar before, so we'll do the, um, the slideshow and then we will move into the Medigration. Uh, before we move into the Medigration, I'll give you some instructions. Then we'll come back and um, one of the feedback last week other, um, was um, just give a little more time for questions. So I'll give some more time. I think I wanted to leave everyone in a state of calm. So hopefully we'll still be able to do that even though we'll have the questions. Um, Okay, so let me start sharing. There's always a little bit, um, so hang on just a second. Um, and let me do that, share, annotate, spotlight, awesome. All right, here we go. So, um, all right, so how we're gonna do this is um, I'm just gonna go ahead and move into the um, slides. For those of you who were on last week, there are a few slides that are the same because we anxiety doesn't change um, as far as the goals of getting uh, your body with less anxiety. So we're going to have a couple of the goals, obviously getting us all to a calmer, happier, more peaceful place. One of the goals for this week is to identify um, our anxiety loops, and I'll get into that, and then of course, always get you back to yourself. I mean, really that's, if I you know, could kind of, the elevator speech of my life purpose is getting, getting you back to you. Um, so that's, that's just, well, that's just something really important to me. I didn't, <laughs> wow, I didn't expect to have that emotional experience, but that is really, it hits me um, how important that is uh, having, having worked and struggled to get myself back to me, um, I just know how important it is for all of us to get back to ourselves. So there you go. That was me being right there in myself. Um, stop anxious thoughts. Uh, we'll go ahead and help with that. And stop anxious neurochemistry. 
Um, and then calm yourself without distraction, which is an amazing experience. And then from going from anxious to embodied. Um, and really that is so, so important. Once you're embodied, you can just be in yourself and know um, more than anything what is true for you. And that's not a selfish place. You become incredibly, incredibly um, in service and giving. Our plans for today. Uh, again, a little bit of a repeat for those who were on last week, a new and healthier perspective on anxiety. Um, identifying your anxiety loop, meeting your limbic system. So last week we met our nervous system and now we are going to meet our limbic system, um, which talks to our nervous system. And we're gonna go through what a metagration is and then we're going to actually do the limbic system metagration. So the new perspective on anxiety, for those of you who were here last week, the not such a new perspective, but it is a new perspective that is really important for me to un have people understand that, you know, anxiety, with, as with most conditions, is a symptom. It's your body telling you something, but that's not the condition. What the body is telling you, what your mind and your body is telling you is that there is some level of disconnection from self, um, whether it first happens physically or if it happens, um, you know, uh, mentally or emotionally. Um, either way, it is a disconnection. Um, so then what we are going to do right now, which we didn't do last week, is we are going to, uh, I'm going to help you identify your personal anxiety loop. Um, and I want to introduce you to a term called, um, oh no, there's a typo. So it's not interception, it's interoception. So I'll change that on the slide. It's interoception. Um, so there's an O in there. Interoception is the chemical language between the mind and body. And with anxiety, there it is spelled properly, interoception is like a bad game of telephone where your mind and your body is just looping in this anxious loop. So um, we are going to now move in and help you actually know where the loop is. Um, so what is your anxiety loop? Um, so. We talked a little bit about this last week, but we didn't talk about the steps. So a mental, emotional, physical anxiety loop is when you first feel you have a thought, they don't like me. The thought then creates the emotion. People not liking me makes me anxious. And then that emotion creates an anxious feeling. And I wanna stop here and just sort of differentiate between emotions and feelings and give you kind of a little um, cheat sheet on the difference. Emotions are energy in motions, E-motion, energy in motion. Feelings are physical feelings. So the F, physical feeling and emotion. And so you can start to differentiate, my feeling is my stomach, my emotion is that I'm anxious. Um, so that's the mental, emotional, physical loop. And I think when we did the, um, when we did one of the polls, which we are going to have polls um, and they're all anonymous. So it's just nice to see with everybody else on, uh, you know, what everybody else's experience with anxiety is. Uh, when we did the poll last week, I think we ended up with about 55 people feeling that they, were more disconnected mentally. Um, and so that might link to when, if you are someone who uh, first experiences a disconnection mentally, you may end up that you believe you first have this thought. And uh, science neuropsychologies um, really are up in the air. They can, uh, with some really amazing, uh, brain neurochemistry, they seem to feel like maybe it's even, you're, something's happening before your thought. Okay, the next kind is, um, you know, this one, these are for people who are really super tuned in um, to your emotional body, the emotional intelligence, and that is someone who 
feels the emotion first. I'm scared they won't like me. And then that emotional feeling uh, creates an anxious feeling. My chest feels so tight. Um, and then I connect that feeling to a thought. So if we go back to when I uh, read the sentence, get you back to yourself, I had the emotion of what it feels like when I experience, and it'll happen again, when I experience having someone understand or feel something deeper in themselves and get them connected back to themselves. So I had that emotional experience first. Then I physically felt the, um, the t I guess, well, no, that might've been, yeah, I did felt it. And then it was then that I actually was saying, I'm going to, you know, I love getting you back to yourself. So it was a weird loop for me. And sometimes that happens. Um, okay, so that's the emotional, physical, and mental. And then the next is pretty popular too, physical, mental, emotional loop. So that's when you have an anxious feeling. Suddenly, my heart is racing. And I don't know why, but I want to know why. So I'm going to link that to an old anxious thought pattern. And then... I'm going to label myself. I am so anxious to go to this event um, or whatever it is that you're anxious about. Um, so those are the three loops. So Mia is going to put up a poll now. What is, what do you feel your anxiety loop is? What type of anxiety loop do you most often experience? And obviously don't worry if you um, don't, can't figure it out. We got people coming in. Hang on. Wow. So it's it's actually, this is awesome. Oh, I love how many people are able to feel this emotional to physical to mental looping. Um, I was going to do the intuitive, but I thought that it would just be confusing. But at a later date, we'll talk about how that intuitive hits because it'd be more along the lines of the mental to emotional to physical. Um, so, okay, we've got that 52% feel that they have a mental, then emotional, then physical feeling. And then about 36% go emotional to physical to mental. Um, and not a lot of people go physical to mental to emotional. Not to change your answer, but um, for those of you, I think about the number of times because I also thought I was a more mental, emotional. And then I realized after I would eat something, my stomach would hurt. And then I would think that the people I was eating, like what did I say wrong at this dinner? Um, and I didn't, I didn't realize that uh, it was just that my stomach was not feeling good and then I was making up a story. So, um, all right, let me get this out of here and we'll go on to the next. All right, so now this is, we're gonna move into, so that we can get ready for the metagration, we're gonna uh, look at the um, limbic system. So, and if this is, I just wanna note this, this is a partial explanation of the brain for this specific understanding. So if there's any neurologists watching, know that I know that I'm only showing part of this. Um, so here is the limbic system. And we're going to shrink that down because we're going to introduce you to the pieces. Now, don't get overwhelmed because we're going to go over this and it's just all of these words are probably pretty clear to people. Um, your hypothalamus, which is over underneath right there, is your fight or flight and your rest and digest. Um, and then you have got your pituitary glands, and those pituit your pituitary gland hangs down from your hypothalamus, um, and your pituitary gland is really a big piece around anxiety, eating disorders, and self-love. Um, so when we're in working on the limbic system today in this metagration, um, pick the spot as you're seeing it in your mind. Pick the spot that most resonates. Am I a rest and digest issue? Do I have anxiety? Could I work on some eating disorder stuff? Um, Self-love. Um, so then the next piece 
is your thalamus. So the thalamus is about perception, vision, hearing. Um, that is a real relay station um, from everything else. It sends that through your brain. It says, you know, I just saw something. I need to react to that. I just heard something. I need to react to that. So that's your thalamus. Um, and then your hippocampus, and this is really important with people with anxiety. It's long-term memory, short-term memory, navigation, and spatial perception. And, you know, when I looked at that, I thought, how is that really that important to emotions? But boy, think about it. When you walk into a room or when you go to a restaurant that you went to, you know, with the, your lover that now is no longer in your life or you walk past the building at your job or all of those things and the way we navigate through life and how we find ourselves in space and then linking that to the emotions and memory. It's why all of those memories, why you can go and have an experience of going to, you know, going home and being in that place and finding either peace or anxiety. Um, so if people have, um, again, as we're doing the meditation, if you are having, uh, if your anxiety seems to get, get triggered more often, you know, when I walk into this room or when I find myself in this area, then you'd want to sort of look for your hippocampus. Um, okay. And then the big guy, um, the amygdala. So that is your main area. They've done some incredible studies where um, they actually stop the amygdala from shooting, from the neuron shooting. And there can be serious uh, differences. Well, they can have um, rage and massive fear when the amygdala is shooting. And then when they turn it off, um, there is a place where like people start being massive risk takers. Um, so the amygdala has a lot to do with that. Um, okay, so next piece is that we are going to now um, talk about what happens when you have an anxious thought, an anxious perception, and an anxious feeling. What happens with this limbic system is that they end, it ends up having these neurons that are just firing and firing and firing. Um, and that is where everything gets triggered. So the next slide is going to show that you have this anxious thought, an anxious perception, uh, an anxious feeling in your body and your neurons start triggering, your limbic system starts sending these messages out. So calming this limbic system is really important. Okay, so we're gonna go slowly through this video. This is what happens when you have an anxious experience. Limbic system starts triggering the neurons, stressful chemicals begin to flood, it's flooding actually your entire brain. Now we're going to bring in calming chemicals and calm that limbic system. Um, so we're gonna go through that one more time because this is what the metagration is going to take us through. I'm really showing you a video of, we're gonna bring up a, um, an anxious experience or thought, neurons will increase the size and the intensity of your limbic system. We'll feel a little bit of flooding and then we'll calm that. Um, so it's just gonna be a blip of an anxious thought. I, I'm not gonna bring you through your heightened, most, you know, most uh, highest. So, Last week when we were talking, we were talking about changing a neural pathway. Um, and I had said that, how do we do that um, with, we, we were talking about people who had done metagrations before. So I want to bring you also through that when you, when we're in the brain during the metagration, we will be actually helping you stop frozen or rutted 
thoughts, the things that probably since you were three or four or five years old that you set in your limbic system to provide you with a safe way to manage through the world as a three, four or five year old now are firing as a 35, 45, 55, 65 year old and they're not working so well. They're really keeping you limited and they've also become over exaggerated. Um, but we can go in and using our consciousness, we can actually change the physiology that's self-directed neuroplasticity. So in the metagration, when we talk, we are going to do what this is, which is these are a neuron firing to another neuron. And this is how it usually happens. And we are actually going to extinguish it and create a ball of energy. So this is gonna show again, I'm gonna stop. So right there, your neurons firing an anxious thought. When you're in there, you are going to, like a match, just start extinguishing that. You can use a fire extinguisher, you can just you know, imagine it losing its power, losing its connection. And then important to the process is this fantastic um, little, hang on, that ball of energy, because that is the energy that you, this is what's so amazing is this energy, once you take that energy and you get it out of your anxious thoughts and old patterns of, of thinking and being, that energy is yours to use in the present moment. And I can't tell you the amount of times, you know, people are sort of like, how, how do you have so much energy? How do you get so much done? And it's like, I have just gone into my brain and taken so many of these unconscious firings that were just sitting back there firing and firing and firing and just like, almost like um, just, uh, raking leaves and grab that energy and just put that into energy for me to use, to learn or to just be. Um, so that's what I want for you is for you to have this energy and for you to be able to use that energy however you want. Okay, I'm going to move quickly. Um, I, we are going to go the full hour this, uh, this week. So, um, oh, that's important. I want to go to the, the next poll actually before we go back because one of the things about those neural pathways are it's the same anxious thought. So Mia's just going to put up a poll right now, um, which is how often is your anxiety the same theme? How often is it that the, you know, 100% of the time, my anxiety stems from the same issue? 75%, I love this, everyone's like 100% of the time, my anxiety stems from the same issue, 75%. Um, Let's just see. And while that poll is going, I won't, I won't turn that off, but while that poll is going, I'm gonna keep going just so that we have enough time. So metagration, what is metagration? Um, so metagration is a pioneering meditation style. I, I, don't, I think any kind of meditation is amazing, uh, but as the next screen will show, I'll tell you why I feel like metagration just pulls it all in and gives you a much more embodied experience. It uses self-directed neural plasticity. It focuses on anatomy and physiology, really giving you that embodied experience. Um, it engages in embodies consciousness, and that is so massive as far as gamma wavelengths and where we're moving in evolution. Um, and then it supports real-time physiological changes. Okay, so the winner is that about 75% of the time, my anxiety stems from the same issue. So that's, I, I figured that, um, that that would be what it is. Um, so how does metagration do this? In a normal brain, we have I think we have more than this, but um, just like I know we have about 30 senses, but we always talk about, you know, the five or six senses. In a normal brain, we have measurable by what can measure brain waves. We have these five different brain waves. And in a normal brain, they all kind of go and do whatever they're doing, wherever they're doing all over your brain. 
Um, and I want to call your attention. So the gamma brain waves, they, their explanation is over here. The gamma brain waves are expanded consciousness. Um, the beta, well, I mean, while I'm doing this, since I clicked, um, metagration brain brings all of those wavelengths together um, and has them work together to have this incredibly present embodied, embodied experience. Um, and I just, I want to call your attention to why this is so powerful. So in regular meditation, which is amazing, it's a theta brainwave that you want to have your brain waves. you know, that's what's so calming. Um, with metagration, what I found was, and through my research and trying to figure out why it was so powerful and how it actually allowed for physiological changes is that it takes these gamma expanded consciousness using consciousness and it links it to these delta wavelengths and these delta wavelengths when we're sleeping are for sleep when we are awake they are healing that's why when we sleep it's a really healing time we go through a bunch of circadian rhythms um so that delta wavelength, and you'll find when you metagrate, sometimes you almost go into like a comatose state, or um, you also can, you can fall asleep. A lot of people will uh, email and say, you know, I just keep falling asleep. Hang in there and um, know that that's normal, and you'll end up getting that um, figured out as you go on. Three parts to a metagration. There is the grounding, body consciousness and the closing. Um, we are going to the body consciousness. I'm going to slide through this kind of quickly. Um, we're going to bring consciousness into the body. We're going to move from that consciousness deep into a cellular experience. From that cellular experience, we're going to move into an actual different populations of cells. And then we're going to move into the bone cells to just really ground ourselves. Um, and you're going to be able to just sort of find yourself in any of these areas at the beginning of the metagration. Once we're in the bone cells, we're going to move up into that limbic system. And we're going to have that quick, anxious perception and feeling um, we are going to change that neural pathway. This is all going to move much slower once we're there. I'm just giving you a visualization. Um, and then again, we're just going to see all of that. Um, oh, we're going to get that out of there. Um, sorry guys, this is just an extra slide. So Oh, with, this is not actually, this is a really important. When we are in here, um, this is really important. When we're down in this area, the pituitary gland actually holds oxytocin. And this is really gonna, going to hit home, and I hope it does in the metagration. So imagine that our pituitary gland holds extra oxytocin. Oxytocin is the chemical of love. I just want, I wish I had done a poll of this, maybe we will next time, is how often do you feel you hold your love back? How often do you want to connect and love someone or something or express love and you hold it back? That is what happens so often as we are children and we just walk into a world and we are, because remember, love isn't just loving outwardly. Love is bringing yourself as a vibration into the world. So every single time you hold yourself back, you are holding your love back. And that gets stored in your pituitary gland. So that storage is what is going to be amazing because we are going to go right into the pituitary gland um, later at the end of the metagration. We're going to open that storage space in the pituitary gland and we are just going to flood um, our uh, whole body with oxytocin. Um, 
So that's what we are going to do. Okay, so let's get started. I'm going to stop sharing for just a second to get the music going, and then um, we will get right into the integration. So while I do that, just get yourself comfortable, and there we go. All right. Welcome to Medigration's anxiety series, Calming Your Limbic System. This Medigration gently guides you up into your brain to shift and repattern and calm your limbic system. Go ahead and take a deep breath in. Three, two, one, out, one, two, three. And ground down into your body, really feeling the force of gravity pulling you down onto the earth. Feel the weight of your head. Feel the heaviness of your shoulders. Ground down into your spine, vertebrae by vertebrae, from your neck all the way down to your lower back. Feel the cradle of your hips and your sacrum. And ground down into your legs from your thighs all the way down to your feet. And really connect to an embodied sense of yourself. And now bring your consciousness right inside your body and connect to the experience that you are on the physical level, 50 trillion cells brought together in space and time. And in your mind's eye, see all of those trillions of cells And then begin to connect to the different populations of cells. Connect first to the specific vibration of your skin cells. And then go ahead and connect to your muscle cells. Next, move in and connect somewhere in your skeleton, connecting to your bone cells. Find the safest, deepest part of your skeleton. And bring your presence and consciousness and really feel the calm being that deep inside your body. And from wherever you are in your bone cells, begin to move yourself 
to your spine. Sliding your consciousness up your spine to the base of your brain. And find your presence at your brain stem. And imagine yourself in a planetarium or out in a field at night looking at the starry sky above you. And as you look up into your vast and beautiful brain, locate your limbic system. See it like a cloud up in the sky. And begin to pull forward and ask the neural pathway, the neural firing, the thought, perception, or experience that is most rutted most habitual to creating anxiety to come forth to the front of your limbic system. And begin to see that neural firing, the connection, of neuron upon neuron. And start to extinguish that firing. Imagining it turning to gray ash. Using a fire hose. Or just squeeze it cut it, pop it, whatever's right for you to break this neural firing. And as you do, begin to feel the calm. Feeling this neural firing is no longer creating anxious chemicals. And you're just at that peaceful, calm experience. And then notice that there's a ball of energy coming from all of the energy no longer used for that thought. And take that ball of energy and toss it gently into another part of your brain. And as you do, create the most beautiful, calm, peaceful thought I am safe. I am love. And watch a new neural pathway being created. And now in your mind's eye, Find your pituitary gland, these two lobes hanging from your limbic system.
And imagine being able to walk into your pituitary gland. And using your imagination, imagine however you would coming upon a closet, a toy box, a treasure chest that is holding all of your oxytocin, the chemical of love. And using a key or a code, begin to open whatever container and see and feel the oxytocin pouring into your pituitary gland. Moving out, calming your entire limbic system. and feel this oxytocin still pouring out, calming your entire brain. And watch and feel as it flows out through your brain, down into your body washing over your heart sliding down covering your adrenals Feel the oxytocin moving all the way down your legs to your feet. And then imagine yourself again as these 50 trillion cells. and see the oxytocin washing over every single cell. Imagine the oxytocin moving through the cell membrane into the inside of all of the cells in your body. and feel and see it as this oxytocin makes its way into the nucleus of every single cell. And in your mind's eye, imagine a beautiful seed of your purpose, your deepest sense of self coming out of the nucleus of every single cell and connecting to that oxytocin. And imagine that seed as a vibration of self beginning to grow within the cell, rippling out to the edge of every one of your cells. So that you are now vibrating as the incredible expression of love that you are. connect to how calm you feel
connect to how happy you are. Feel how deeply grateful you are for being the vibration of love that is you. And know that at any moment during the day, with any anxious experience, you can, using your consciousness, move into your body, ground yourself into your bones. You can extinguish any anxious thought, any anxious pattern. You can flood your entire mind and body with oxytocin, bringing yourself to the highest vibration of the expression of you. You truly can heal through greater consciousness. Okay, so I one thing that I want to, this is really hard because I'm always so concerned of bringing people back to, you know, we've just entrained all these beautiful brain waves and now I'm going to sort of split your brain to the visual and, you know, those alpha and beta. So I'll do it sort of try to calmly keeping at least the theta. Um, we're going to do one more poll, which is, um, if Mia can put the poll up, which is if um, the biology that you saw on the actual, um, the anatomy and physiology that I brought you through in the deck helps you with the metagration. Um, and mostly I just want to make, oh, that's amazing. I just want to see if there was any, no, it was too confusing. Um, great. Oh, that's amazing. That's really, really good. Okay, good. Um, you know, people who metagrate, people who are drawn to this type are, you really are a brilliant, brilliant bunch. You're, you're, your neurons are incredibly fast and they're looking for, you know, they're, they're the multitaskers um, of that. Um, and then, sorry, one last poll. Mia, would you put up um, if anyone, if you know, what percentage of people are brand new to metagration and what percentage of people um, are just new, first time metagraders? Um, so, oh, good, we've got some new. So I hope, um, oh, that's awesome. Okay, great. Um, and thank you, everybody. I love everybody who has done this before. Um, that's obviously a really good vote for um, what it does for you. So that's terrific. Um, okay, so what we're going to do now is... Um, I am going to stop sharing so that I can see the chat. I'm actually, first I'm going to tell you where you'll be able to find um, this Metagration that we just did. The Metagration website, um, oh, I've got literally one minute. I'm such a time person. So the Metagration website is, uh, you'll be able to find this Metagration later this afternoon. It will be in the anxiety series and it will be called Calming Your Limbic System and it will be the free one at number one. Um, and you can find me and Metagration, Metagration at Metagration.com. You can find uh, my website at lauragray.com. I'm on Instagram, Metagration uh, underscore Laura underscore Gray. 
And then uh, our YouTube Metagration uh, channel is, I think uh, it's got some pretty amazing one minute things that uh, work really well. The Instagram does too. You can sort of scroll through those things. Um, so I'm going to stop sharing just because I want to, I'm going to try to stop sharing um, there to see if I can see if they're, oh, oh, that's okay. So just people saying, thank you. Oh, I turned the music down. I did see that. I hope that worked. Um, so I hope that is anything. Were there any questions? Did anyone have any questions? That's a good, that is really, really terrific. Um, so thank you so much. Um, oh, no, we're good. I, we have plenty of time, but I'd love to get you off and going on your day. Um, so there are, you know, one thing that I do want to say about Metagration, we do have it separated into conditions. Um, and, you know, I did that for kind of the mainstream thinking um, that people are looking to solve a condition. But Metagration is a whole body experience. I, I can tell you that I do Metagrations from every single series, even the erectile dysfunction. I'll go in because we've got, you know, women have the same vascular flow um, that men do in the same operating from our hearts down. Um, so it's just amazing. And even if you don't have immune issues or you don't have digestive issues, um, they're all really, really amazing. Um, and look for the trackers. The trackers are great. And please email me. Um, I will put together, you know, ones that work well for you that I think you should um, or could be using. So um, thank you. I've loved doing these two webinars. I don't think we have a president. Um, yet. Well, I guess we have a president, but I don't know if we have a president for next January. Um, so, oh, I'm so glad. Thank you so much. Um, I wish you all the best and I hope you do more webinars to come. I think I might do a becoming your own medical intuitive webinar, um, which I think is really helpful and we need that in today's day. So thank you so much and have a great weekend. Bye-bye.